Hello, and welcome to the HOC Gaming Overview of the forthcoming updates to Kerbal Space Program version point twenty-five. So, what are the big things? What do you want to know about? What are the important changes that will affect how you play the game? Well, simply put, number one is the addition of many new space plane parts. Number two is the addition of administration to career mode. And number three is the addition of difficulty settings. Lots of summing. Right, number one. A couple of mods, including the Space Plane Plus pack, that's an awful lot of peas, have been integrated into the vanilla game to improve the Mark 1 and Mark 2 Space Plane parts. This includes new cockpits, cargo bays, new fuselages, and many new wings. Also, fantastically, there's a Mark 2 sized inline RCS monopropellant tank, which is really cool. What might be even cooler, though, is the cargo bays. Inline storage for space planes, allowing for the delivery of spacecraft to orbit via our SSDOs. Kerbal's space program, bringing us closer and closer to owning our very own Skylons. Moving swiftly on, number two, the agents. Agency administration strategies. Essentially, you have the option of enacting five strategies simultaneously out of the various ones provided by your space agency's four different departments finances, science, public relations, and operations. As you might imagine, different strategies have different effects, and these come in the form of gains and penalties penalties to the amount of reputation, funds, and science you will receive after each mission. For example, one strategy is called the Unpaid Research Program, which has the effect of converting all of your reputation into science points, but leaves your funds untouched. Alongside this, there's also a slider to allow you to adjust your commitment to each strategy, perhaps decreasing the magnitude of one department's effect in favour of another. Oh, and the administration building has a swimming pool. A swimming pool. Oh yes. Finally, of the big three, number three. This is potentially the one that excites me the most. A wide range of difficulty options, all available when starting a new save game, and a few of them available via the in-game menu. You could disable the reverse flight and quick loading options, meaning that every mistake you make is permanent. Prevent dead crew members from respawning, meaning that as soon as Jeb dies, he's gone forever and alter the rate at which each of the three currencies is gained to make climbing that tech ladder take a bit longer. Just to name a few out of the dozen or so available settings. I like this a lot because having to deal with my mistakes can lead to impromptu, exciting decision making, as well as make each save game a unique story of its own. And those are the really big updates. As for the smaller changes, we have space center buildings that can be destroyed if you drop enough stuff on if you drop enough stuff on them, giving you the option of spending funds in career mode to repair them. Crew can be transferred from capsule to capsule without having to go on EVA via a new transfer button on the crew hatch of each command pod. The nav ball has been improved with extra markers. A normal marker being especially useful for changing your inclination without affecting your orbit too much. There's finally a key binding for 100% throttle, which is Z by default, or Z for you Americans. So no more relying on action groups or staging for those Kerbal cannons of yours, you strange, strange Kerbal killing monster you. And finally, perhaps most importantly, above all else, the Kerbal Space Center grass texture looks a tad prettier. Ooh. Yeah. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please do like the video, and I will see you next time.